Hey, in this video I'm going to give you two hacks to stop panic attacks and anxiety from dominating your life. Anxiety and panic attacks are like a glass wall that tries to hold you back and you see the fun stuff on the other side but it's difficult to get there. There might be a lot of experiences in life that you don't have because you fear the fear, you fear the anxiety that you will feel there. Or you may still do all of those things but you don't feel at ease when you are there because the anxiety is present or you are anticipating those moments as they are coming closer. My name is Geert, it's a Flemish name. I was born in 1981 in Brussels in Europe, so English is not my native tongue. But I've had panic attacks for more than 14 years, from the age of 9 till the age of 23. I was able to overcome my panic attacks a long time ago, in 2004, and I immediately started to help other people who still suffered from panic attacks. And I've been very successful at that. I help people through my book on Amazon, I have my clients who follow an audio course, mp3s or cds from home to stop their panic attacks, to overcome their panic attacks and I've been able to help more than 30,000 people at the time of this recording and I want to help you and give you a couple of tips in this video. First of all, let's see what a panic attack is, let's see what anxiety does to your body and why we have it. Anxiety and panic attacks are a self-defense system, one of the many self-defense systems that our body actually has. Just imagine that you and I would be walking around in the jungle. And I realize that it's strange to go for a walk in the jungle, but bear with me. We're walking in the jungle and we're enjoying the beautiful flowers and the butterflies and the birds that we see. And all of a sudden in front of us we see something strange. It's a little bit orange and white and black and it's furry. It looks like this. It looks like my little friend here, but there is a tiny difference. It's not a teddy tiger, it's a real tiger. So we have a real tiger standing right in front of us and it's obvious that he's hungry. He looks at us and he thinks, hmm, lunch. Now what will happen is that our amygdala, part of our brain, is immediately going to recognize the danger and it's going to launch the fight or flight response. To fight the tiger, which would be a silly idea, or to run away from the danger. Now in order to do that, our body is going to prepare and the blood is going to go to our muscles. Now as a consequence, we will have a range of sensations like our heart rate is going up, our mouth will get dry, we will get a red face, we might start to sweat or hyperventilate, we will start to breathe a little bit faster, we might have some nausea, some lightheadedness, a feeling of warmth going through our body. We might have a whole range of strange system, symptoms and sensations that we don't like. Now, at the time of the tiger, when the tiger is standing right in front of us, what we're not going to do is look at each other and say like, whew, my heart is pounding really fast and oh, I feel so weird. I mean, what's going on with me? Why am I having this? Why am I having this right now? We're not going to worry about that because there's a tiger in front of us. Chances are that we're not even going to feel all of those sensations. Our body is focused 100% on the danger the tiger. But what happens when you were minding your own business and you were just shopping for groceries? You were driving your car, standing in a traffic jam or you are on the highway. You are just sitting in a meeting room trying to pay attention to the boring presentation. You are talking to someone, you are in a conversation. You are simply sitting in a restaurant, sitting in some form of public transportation, in the movie theater. You are at home. I don't care where you are. You're somewhere and all of a sudden you start to feel the anxiety. You start to feel those strange sensations. What happens then? That's the crucial moment where you can launch a panic attack or when you, where you can increase the anxiety or where you can stop a panic attack from happening. And I'm going to use my whiteboard to explain what to do because you need two hacks to prevent a panic attack at that point. The first thing that will happen, and this always happens, is that you will feel certain symptoms. This is the way that you know that you are anxious. Now the symptoms that you feel will vary for you and, and for everyone else who has panic attacks. So we all have our own set of symptoms. I had a pounding heart. My heart would start to beat really fast and sometimes skip a beat. I would have a feeling of warmth going through my body, some tingling sensations, get a dry mouth, get some nausea and other digestive issues. I would have a, a feeling like as if I was going to faint. Sometimes I even thought I was going to lose consciousness, so I had that lightheadedness. 
I also had migraine headaches and, and severe headaches so bad that I thought and actually was convinced that I had a tumor. So I visited my doctor, I had a CAT scan done. At that time I was a hypochondriac as well, so I visited my doctor more than, than I saw my own parents. I always thought that something was wrong and that my doctor overlooked something because I was feeling those symptoms. So I was sure that they weren't imaginary, but he couldn't find anything. So that was pretty frustrating. So like I said, you can have different symptoms, but there's a whole list of sensations that we will feel. Now because of those sensations, what happens is that you get the first why questions in your head. Why is this happening? Why am I feeling this? What's going on? Logical consequences of the symptoms, of the feelings that you have. But as a consequence of those questions, the anxiety will start to rise. So you increase the anxiety because these questions right here are actually anxious questions, right? What's going on? Why is this happening to me? That's how you raise anxiety. Now your body says, oh, you're anxious, so there must be a danger, no problemo. I know what to do, I have self-defense mechanisms and systems for this. I'm going to launch the fight or flight response. Just as if you would have met a real tiger. Your body does not know the difference. When you have anxious thoughts, your body thinks there's a real danger in front of you, so it will launch the fight or flight response. And like I explained, as we were walking in the jungle, what happens then is your body prepares itself. As a result, you will get more symptoms. That's a simple consequence of the fight or flight response. So the symptoms go up. You will probably not like that, right? So what happens at that point is that you get more of the why questions. You're going to say like, why, why is this happening? At first I thought I might be imagining that I was feeling something, but it keeps increasing, so this must be real. Something must be going on. Why am I feeling so anxious? Why is it happening here? Where's the exit? How can I get out of here? What will people think of me when they see this? Will they think I'm weak? Will they understand it? Will I lose my job, my, my romantic partner, my friends because of this? A lot of why questions. and. Obviously, as you can see, what will happen is that, and I think you see this one coming, you will get more anxiety. Because what you're actually doing here is you're communicating to your body, there's not just one danger, one tiger in front of me. I'm in an arena and I'm surrounded by tigers. Please help. And your body is stupid and intelligent at the same time. It says, no problemo, I know what to do. Let me increase the fight or flight response. So I'm going to prepare you even more for that apparent big danger that you are facing right now. But as a consequence of the increase, increasing fight or flight response, you get more symptoms and the circle is round. Now if you go through this circle, the anxiety will increase each and every time you go through it. And if you're really good at this, if you pass through this circle often, you will launch a full-blown panic attack. If you go through this circle on a moderate level, you will have generalized anxiety. So this is where you might have a generalized anxiety disorder where you are anxious 24-7 without real panic attacks. But if you continuously go through this, then you get panic attacks. And I was really good at this. I, I was able to launch a panic attack in a matter of minutes. And one of the panic attacks that made me decide to do whatever I had to do to stop my panic attacks is while I was simply in bed. I was watching some television in bed and I saw something on TV that I would have to do in a couple of months. And the simple thought of that made me scared, made me anxious, gave me those symptoms, made me think like, wow, is this how my life is going to be now, etc. And I got a panic attack in my bed and that's when I said, okay, I've had enough of this, I'm going to figure this out. And that's what I did. So how do you break this? How do you stop panic attacks? Well, the first thing you'll need to do is you'll need to break this circle so you can't keep going through it. And the first thing you need to do is you take away this part of anxiety. We take away this anxiety. How do you do this? Well, we were anxious here because you had the why thoughts, those negative what if thoughts. Now we take these away by using a different mindset, by using different sentences when we talk to ourselves. Instead of saying, why, what's happening, what's going on, you say, okay, I'm having some symptoms or I'm apparently anxious because I don't like to be here or I don't like this, but that's okay. 
If I now start to worry about this, if I get fear of the fear, then I will launch the panic attack cycle and if I'm really good at this, I will get a panic attack. But I do not want this anymore. So whatever happens, it's okay. I'm just going to accept this feeling. If you can do this, you will not have a panic attack. And I have to, I have to tell you that this is, this is very hard. It took me a while before I mastered this. And the people who are following my audio course at home, it takes them a couple of weeks before they can really do this. But this is where it all begins. We all had to go through this. You have to stop this part of anxiety by talking to yourself in a different way. And one trick that you can use is just imagine that you are looking after an eight-year-old girl. And she walks up to you and she says, hey, I'm a little bit anxious. I feel strange and I, I'm anxious. I feel all these things. What are you going to do? Are you going to say, wow, yeah, your heart rate is pounding really fast. This, this must be something bad. You're probably dying or something really bad is happening to you. No, if you talk to her like this, you're going to increase her anxiety. You're going to give her a panic attack. What you're probably going to say is something like, hey, don't worry, it's probably because and you're feeling this because you're going to soothe her, you're going to calm her down. So that's what you have to do to yourself. Say these things to yourself and you will be able to stop this anxiety step and then the circle cannot go on. The second trick is that we can try to prevent the circle from even starting by taking away as many of the symptoms as possible. This is a powerful one. This was a difficult one. This is one where it took me a long time to figure this one out because my doctor didn't help me with this. Before I continue, I am not a doctor. So if you have strange sensations and symptoms, you should always visit your doctor first. I did that too. I had the, the brain scan done. I had my blood tested on a bi-weekly basis at times. And my doctor always said, Geert, you are in good health. Go home. There's nothing to be afraid of. You shouldn't have anxiety. Go home. And so I was a little bit relieved and I went home and then I sat down and said, okay, so why am I still feeling anxious then? Why am I still feeling those symptoms? Well, it turned out that there are a whole range of causes of those symptoms. And once that you get a list of all of those causes, you'll see your own symptoms and you'll see and, and get some type of revelation and say like, wow, so that's why I've been having anxiety and panic attacks for so long. That's why my doctor couldn't find anything. That's why it kept going on. And that'll be like an aha moment that you will never ever forget. And let me give you an example. In my case, those migraine headaches that I had, they were caused by artificial sweeteners. I was consuming aspartame and, and other artificial sweeteners at the time and they gave me serious headaches and migraine attacks and sometimes even the lightheadedness as well. I took the aspartame away, the headaches were gone. And so I had to take away all of the different causes and a lot of them were actually caused by how I was treating my body, the foods that I was eating, the foods I was not eating, the things I was drinking, the things I was not drinking. Your body is an important generator of anxiety and panic attacks or calmness, zenness. So you'll have to make a couple of changes there and I'll help you with that because this is a very important one. My doctor wasn't able to help me with this. I had to figure this out on my own by doing some research, by testing things on myself. But I'm glad I, I took that effort because if you don't have any symptoms, there's nothing to be afraid of, right? You won't have those why questions. Most of the causes are the way we treat our body and the way we think. It's a combination of the both of them. The causes are not in your past, by the way. That's important as well. When I still visited my therapists and my psychotherapists and psychiatrists, etc., they always wanted to talk about the past. So, hey, Geert, tell me about your past. Let's talk about your childhood. Oh, so that's when the panic attacks started. That's why they started. Okay, so I came home and I said, yes, I know the causes now. So why am I still having panic attacks? Why am I still so anxious? It's because nobody can change the past. 
There is something that you are doing now, today, each and every moment that you feel anxious, that you have a panic attack, and it's right now that you need to make some changes to stop panic attacks, to stop the anxiety. So that's where I specialize in. My clients, when I help them, I help them in the now, because we can't change the past. It's the now that you will have to change. This is really important. And if you want more help, if you want more information on how to stop panic attacks and what I've explained here, make sure that you come on over to the website because I have different types of help. I have a free newsletter, that's where you should start, where I send out videos and articles on a weekly basis with tips and techniques that you can implement right away to lift that anxiety gloss that is trying to hold you back. If you want more, I have a book available on Amazon and I have the audio course. That's my paid form of coaching. It's a self-help course that my clients follow from home. It's a very successful co a course with a very high success rate because I really go into the details there and I really explain what you should do, why you should do it, so you understand the entire system behind everything. And I think that's important. And I think that that's one of the reasons why my panic attacks never came back since 2004 because Everything became an automatism. I understand the, the anxiety. I understand my body to the extent where anxiety cannot control me anymore. Now, I know that you've probably tried other things before that didn't work. Otherwise, you wouldn't be watching me right now. And that's why I have a trial on the site. So you can try the course, see if it helps. And I think that this is important because I don't want to take your money. I don't want to keep your money if I can't take your panic attacks away. I've had to myself. I know how difficult it is to, to live life with anxiety, to fear future events as they come closer, to have to use excuses and say no when people invite you to do something with them. I've lost friends. I've lost relationships because of that. I've lost so many experiences that I, that I did not have during those 14 years of panic attacks. And it made me really sad and I've been trying to catch up uh, the last couple of years and, and it really works and, and it gave me my smile back. I'm able to live my life again and, and anxiety doesn't hold me back anymore. And that's, that's a feeling of liberation, of, of freedom that is, well, that I didn't know before. And I want to help you with that. I want to help you to get back up on your feet and, and start living your life again. So if you want my help, Come on over to the website if you're not already on the website. You'll find the link in the description if you see this video on YouTube. I'll also put the address in the image right now. Come on over to the website. Subscribe to the free newsletter. That's a great place to get started. And let's get this done. Let's attack the anxiety. Let's make sure that the panic attacks cannot dominate your life anymore. Let's do this.